Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we have another comparison review. I really enjoy putting these up and I know that you guys really like them and find them helpful as well. But instead of skincare today, we are going to be talking about two different hair masks that are actually from the same brand, a very popular brand and two very popular hair masks at that. So I have their The Cure Intense Repair Mask and the Soul Food nourishing mask. You guys may recognize this if you've watched my hair care videos in the past. I've had this for a long time at this point and have recommended it several times because I think it's great. I've always really wanted to know how it directly compares to this one and when I first purchased this actually, I almost bought this one instead. I was really torn between the two. So I thought we could talk through ingredients, formulation, hair types, which one is better or if they're pretty much the same kind of thing at the end of the day in this video. So if all that's of interest to you, then you are in the right spot. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so like always with my comparison reviews, I like to start off by talking through high level product information briefly, features, benefits, price point, we'll compare those things and then move on to ingredients and formulation. So let's start off with the one that I've had longer, which is the Cure Intense Repair Mask. This actually comes in three different sizes. So the one that I have here has eight ounces of product in it, retails for $38. They also have one that's double the size. So a 16 ounce tub for $52 and then a two ounce bottle for $14. They say that this is an intensive turnaround treatment that restores moisture and promotes healthy looking and feeling hair. They say that this is for anyone looking to restore moisture to their hair and that it's safe for color treated, Brazilian treated, and keratin treated hair. So no details as far as certain hair types and textures that this may be best for, benefits that you may achieve in using it, kind of interesting. I mean, they do call out two key ingredients and the benefits that those ingredients can give your hair. But aside from that, I feel like it's kind of a vague description. So we don't really have much else detail there. Essentially, in short, this is supposed to be a mask that's supposed to add moisture and give you healthier looking and feeling hair, which I guess is what we're going for in using a hair mask. Comparing that to the Soul Food Nourishing Mask, this one has the same amount of product in it, but actually is $10 cheaper. So it retails for $28 in this same exact size as this one, which again is 38. So as a consumer, that immediately indicates to me that this one is superior to this one, maybe has better ingredients, better formulation, something to warrant that higher price point, which of course we'll dig into and I'll let you guys know if I think that the $10 extra for that is actually something that makes sense. But this says it's ultra luxurious and a rich mask that it's packed with vitamins and nutrients to condition the hair making it soft, silky, and smoother than ever. They say that this one is rich and creamy, but is not supposed to weigh the hair down. They say it's perfect for all hair types again, but especially those in need of deep hydration. And then they say why it's special. It's like a cool drink of water for your hair. This mask quenches hair's thirst. The rich moisturizing formula provides superior hydration, leaving hair manageable, soft, and shiny for days. So really similar claims and descriptions between the two. Obviously there are slightly different words used, but at the end of the day, the theme is the same, adding moisture, making your hair more manageable and healthier. So hopefully you guys can see why I was really torn between the two when I was first trying to decide which one to purchase because there's not really much in the description to help you to figure out which one may be better for you than the other. So that's again what this video is for. So now let's talk about the ingredients. I will pull up the ingredient labels here quickly side by side so that we can see where we have overlap and which ingredients these masks have in common. I said this in a recent video. I do think it's worth me reiterating from time to time that this doesn't tell us the full picture. Just looking at ingredients like this doesn't tell us everything that we need to know about a product, but I always like to do that because especially in this case, if we have things that are marketed in really similar ways, but one is $10 more, I wanna see, is there something on the ingredient label that would make this be worth $10 more than the other? So the top set of ingredients are really, really similar between the two. Water, cetyl alcohol, and cedarol alcohol are the top three ingredients in both of these masks. If you're someone that is worried by seeing the word alcohol on a hair care product, skincare product, in this case, this is not something to be worried about because these are not drying forms of alcohol. They're actually emollients that are going to help to soften and smooth the hair as well as just helping to make the texture nice and thick and soft and smooth as well. So nothing to be worried about here, but exactly the same between the two, just flipped. And then once we move past those top three ingredients on the label, we still do have a lot of overlap. So a lot of the same ingredients in both, but the thing about this is that they're not really ingredients that I would spend time talking about in any other review because they don't really matter in my opinion. Similar texture enhancers, preservatives, forms of fragrances and essential oils, which I personally don't have issue with in hair care, 
a lot of same ingredients in those categories, which are not really categories that I spend time talking about unless something pops up in a concerning way to me which is not the case here. There are a couple ingredients though that fall into the ingredient highlight category that they have in common, which include sea buckthorn oil, dimethicone, and panthenol. Dimethicone we can breeze right by because it's not a majorly impressive ingredient, something that you'll find in almost every hair care product except those that are marketed as silicone free, which is why I wanted to quickly touch on that. I personally have no issue with silicones in my hair care products and I actually think that they're necessary for my hair. They kind of create a seal on the hair to protect your hair from breakage, soften, smooth, make it more manageable, make it softer, shinier, etc. So I love silicones. I think they have definitely been demonized in situations where they don't need to be, but in case you were wondering my stance on that because sometimes I do get questions about that. For me and my hair type specifically, all good. Panthenol is an ingredient that helps to protect as well as hydrate, so I love that ingredient for both hair care and skin care. And then sea buckthorn oil is a really great ingredient. That's an awesome source of vitamin E, which is an antioxidant that conditions the skin and hair. It also is an awesome source of fatty acids that will help to soften and smooth the hair. So sea buckthorn oil is an ingredient that should treat the hair very well that I was happy to see that both of these have. Now let's talk about differences, what you'll find in this that you won't find in this and vice versa. So I would say these each have their own unique ingredient highlight towards the very top of the label, right after the top three ingredients that they have in common. The Cure has shea butter, which is a really rich, nourishing, moisturizing ingredient that helps to condition the hair. The Soul Food Mask has a hoba seed oil, which actually technically isn't an oil. It's a wax ester that is an emollient that's going to help to moisturize and protect the hair as well. Three more highlights here that we will really quickly breeze through include glycerin to hydrate the hair, vitamin E, which is funny because it has the source of vitamin E and the sea buckthorn oil, plus vitamin E on its own, and an ingredient called borage seed oil, which is a really nice nourishing oil that's also a great source of fatty acids. So good set of ingredients here. This only has one more highlight that I'm going to bring up, which is an interesting one. It's an ingredient that I love in skincare, but I haven't really found much research on in hair care, and it's vitamin C or ascorbic acid. So I thought maybe Amika would have some claims about that ingredient or try to boast about the fact that they have vitamin C in this mask and they really don't, which we read through in their product description. So I did try to do some digging to see if I could find any research about the benefits that you may see to your hair in topically applying ascorbic acid. Couldn't really find anything, which of course doesn't mean that those studies don't exist, but the studies that I was seeing pull up with those sorts of searches were related to potential hair loss issues with vitamin C deficiency, not relating to topical vitamin C application. So don't really know what that's going to do for the hair, but at the very least, it may just be a really nice conditioning ingredient for the hair as well. Okay, now let's wrap this up by talking about formulation and my personal experience in using both of these masks. So I have to say that the formulations are almost identical between the two. Yes, the cure is definitely thicker than the soul food mask, but when it comes down to it, when I'm actually applying it to my hair and then rinsing it off after and just kind of taking a look at how my hair looks after using both of them, I really don't know that I feel or see any difference at all, if I'm being completely honest. But with that being said, I really enjoy both of them. They're very thick, deeply nourishing conditioning masks. So keep that in mind if you're someone with really fine, thin hair. I don't know that you'll love these because they may weigh your hair down a bit, but otherwise, for reference, I have, I would say, fine to normal strands, but just a lot of hair, and these masks don't weigh down my hair. I really, really like both, and I feel like both of them help to deeply condition my hair, which is really, I'm sorry, I feel like I keep touching my hair, stop it. Which is really a must for me because I only wash my hair once a week, so when I do that, I like to make sure that I have a mask like this in my hair for at least 10 minutes, if not more. So I really, really like both of them, but do I think that this one performs better to where it warrants being $10 more in price? I don't know that I would say that. I don't really think it does. I think both of them are great and they, again, just feel so similar to me. But regardless, I would recommend both of these masks and this is something that I still would repurchase even though I think the additional $10 is a little bit unnecessary and doesn't make a ton of sense to me. It's something that I still really like and just because I've been enjoying it for so long, I would still repurchase it. I mean, we are getting a few more ingredient highlights here that we're not getting in this one, so kind of makes sense. But again, when I'm talking about feel and performance, I'm like, kind of a toss up. So that is everything that I have to say for this review. I am very curious to hear your guys' thoughts. Have you used either of these masks? Have you used both? Did you have a similar experience to me? 
thinking that they're pretty much the same thing. Are you interested in purchasing either after watching this video? If so, I'll make sure to have them both linked below. I definitely would recommend them. And I mean, keep in mind, I've been using this one for a really long time and I love it. So it's definitely something that I would repurchase even though it's $10 more. I just don't really understand why it's $10 more. But still, I think they're both really good products and you can't really go wrong. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, click on that notification bell, and send my channel to a friend because all of those things really help to support me and mean a lot to me. And if there's anything else you would like to see from me next, leave that request in the comments below. I would love to do that for you guys. Other than that, my next video will be up in a few days, so stay tuned for that. But until then, I hope you have a great few days.